Voyager 1 has traveled over 11 billion miles and has something to say. To give you an idea of how far 11 billion miles is, it's the same as traveling around the Earth 440,000 times. Although 11 billion miles seems like a lot, the Voyager hasn't even left the neighborhood compared to the vastness of space. Sorry, are you wondering where Voyager 1 is right now? Most scientists have no clue, so us regulars are as far away from the truth as we are from Mars. What we know is, V1 is getting close to the limit of the heliosphere. Still, NASA claims it has yet to reach interstellar space, even though several well-known experts claim it did months or even years ago. No one can agree on where Voyager 1 is right now, so this debate is the most talked about thing in astrophysics. NASA's Voyager 1 has sent some strange data from outside our solar system. Its relevance has even scientists scratching their heads. NASA says that the data sent by Voyager 1 doesn't match up with where the spacecraft is. Since 1977, when it first set out to learn about the solar system and beyond, this spacecraft has been on the job. It is 14.5 billion kilometers away from Perth, making it the most distant thing humans ever made. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft is still on its way across interstellar space almost half a century after it was launched. However, the seasoned spacecraft is communicating with us, but we still don't understand what it's telling us. According to NASA, the probe is functioning normally. They did add, however, the data from the spacecraft's altitude, articulation, and control system should coincide with the craft's motions and orientation. The AACS ensures that Voyager's antenna remains aimed at Earth, allowing the spacecraft to communicate with NASA about its surroundings. It's been about 45 years since each spacecraft first launched. That's a lot longer than anyone predicted at the outset. It has been reported by NASA that the Voyager 2 probe, the identical twin of Voyager 1, is operating normally. The thing has been alone in space for over 40 years and still works. If it works that well, I'd like to order two Voyagers from my internet service provider. Let's take it back a bit. In 1977, we sent Voyager 1 into orbit to discover more about the outer planets of our solar system, and it hasn't stopped delivering us scientific data ever since. The innovative spacecraft has been on a galactic journey since 2012, when it departed from the solar system. Our friend in outer space seems to be sending out false information that doesn't represent what is really going on there. Even if the system data is wrong, the antenna must be in the right place because the spacecraft is getting instructions from NASA and sending data back to Earth. The old spaceship can't go into safe mode, where it only does the most important tasks, because its systems aren't working right. NASA said that until they know more about what's wrong, they can't say how long the spacecraft will be able to collect and send scientific data. Dodd and her co-workers want to find out why the robot from Earth is sending false information. The engineering team is dealing with some very big problems. Because Earth and Voyager are so far apart, it takes two days for a message to go from Earth to Voyager and back again. The travel time of light from Earth to where Voyager is now located in the galaxy is 20 hours and 30 minutes. Still, Dodd said, I think our team will find a way to solve this problem with AACS. On the edge of the solar system, strange things are going on. Scientists are seriously confused because the heliopause, which is the boundary between the heliosphere, the bubble of solar wind that surrounds the solar system, and the interstellar medium, the stuff between the stars, seems to be moving and making strange angles. In the last 10 years, more and more people have come to agree that the heliopause is not a fixed line. NASA's Interstellar Boundary Explorer satellite used data from Voyager 1 and 2 to study the emissions of energetic, neutral atoms. ENAs are made when solar winds and the interstellar medium mix. We won't know for sure where these limits are until the Voyager spacecraft sends back a precise reading to Earth. Models of how the heliopause will change in the future will be made based on these observations. Because of their energies are so different, the solar wind and the interstellar medium are always moving the line between them. Yet, contrary to what was thought, recent studies of the heliopause have shown results. The brightening of ENAs measured by IBEX over a period of months in 2014 pointed to asymmetries in the heliopause. However, researchers later found that these asymmetries did not match the accepted models. Scientists also found that the heliopause changed very quickly when they looked at data from the Voyager 1 and 2 missions. This explains why so much time passed between the two probes reaching the limits of the heliosphere, and it quickly approached the limits. For example, V1 has reached the speed of 39,000 miles per hour. So you thought the Bugatti was fast, right? This speed is so fast that even today's space technology can't keep up. Still, faster spaceship launches that use more advanced technology need to catch up to V1 in terms of speed. At the start of V1's mission, when it was still exploring the planets, scientists used the planet's strong gravitational fields to speed it up, and it has stayed at that speed ever since. In their paper published in Nature Astronomy on October 10, the researchers described this divergence as intriguing and perhaps disputed. With the help of the interstellar map and the accelerating probe, NASA will keep studying the heliopause. Weiss says that Zernstein has promised a brand new, better satellite that can find ENAs will be launched in 2025. Until then, we can only guess what's going on in the most distant parts of our solar system. To figure out what the data from Voyager 1 means, NASA needs slow, long-distance transmissions. Everything is ready to go, but we need coordinates to get where we need to go. 
NASA's Voyager 1 team is trying to figure out why the spacecraft seems lost. The progress is slow because the mission is so far from Earth. After five years of preparation, NASA sent Voyager 1 into space in 1977. The spacecraft has been exploring the galaxy for 45 years, making multiple flybys of other planets, and is now around 14.5 billion miles from Earth. The spacecraft has not only uncovered new information, but has also encountered several puzzles. The most recent thing is that the Earth is getting older telemetry data. Thomas Zabuchan, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate, told the Space Studies Board of the National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine on Thursday, we have a problem with the Voyager 1 spacecraft. Zabuchan says that the signals being sent by Voyager's Attitude, Articulation and Control System, which is in charge of keeping the spacecraft and its antenna pointed in the right direction, don't show what is really happening on board. But figuring out the answer to this riddle isn't easy because Earth and Voyager 1 are so far away from each other that it takes a long time to talk to the spacecraft, which almost makes it a victim of its own strength. Take Zabukin at his word and conduct a conversation with a friend where you can only say one word to each other every day. Even worse, you have to wait a whole day for a reply. In this way, we can't keep talking. Even though its satellites were only meant to last for five years, NASA is still able to talk to V1 through radio waves. This is a method that should still work long after our solar system is gone. The radio waves take 16 hours to reach Earth, and that time will only get longer as V1 moves farther away from our solar system. Zubukin is sure that the Voyager crew will figure out what's going on, but he also said that the spaceship can't keep going forever. Because its nuclear power supply has run out, Voyager 1 is also running at a much cooler temperature than it was meant to be. He said, I'm not telling you that this is the end of that mission because the people working on Voyager have fixed a lot of problems over the years. Don't get me wrong, Voyager did have some real problems, but the crew has fixed them ever since I've been at NASA, he said. But if it can't be solved one day, it is time to say goodbye with champagne. And you should keep in mind that this isn't just any spaceship. It's a message for alien life. The audiovisual message on the gold-plated record on V1 is both a time capsule and a message to intelligent life. The disc has musical and acoustic recordings from Earth, such as the sound of waves lapping on the shore, as well as greetings in more than 55 different languages. If we ever lose contact with our beloved spaceship, it will still outlive the Earth. V1 will still be traveling through space long after humans have died out and the sun has grown so big that it swallows up the whole Earth. It will do this quietly, making maps of places that have never been seen before and that we probably never will. Or we may catch up to it someday. We will match the Voyager journey someday. Or will it remain a lonely travel of forever? Tell us in the comments, like the video, and subscribe to get more like it.